Hello friends, we are Snow Not Employed by Fang Company, so let's stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do lowest common ancestor of a binary search tree lead code problem. And if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like LinkedIn, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Uber, Reddit and Twitter. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code easy problem and basically first of all we are given the definition that what a lowest common ancestor means. The lowest common ancestor is defined between any two nodes P and Q such as that the lowest node in given tree uh, that has both P and Q as the descendants where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself as well. We are given a binary search tree and we are also given two nodes in that binary search tree and now we need to find the lowest common ancestor between those given two nodes uh, so let's try to understand this with this example basically we are given a binary search tree over here and we are also given the value of p and q to be 2 and 8 so subsequently if we see over here 2 is located at this place and 8 is located at this place so the most common element or the immediate common uh, common element that we can find is actually 6 in this case. So that's why in this case we are going to return 6 as the answer because that is the lowest common ancestor between the node 2 and 8. Uh, if we take one more example in this case. So over here we are given this P is equal to 2 and Q is equal to 4. So P is located at this 2 and Q is actually located at this 4. Now if you see in this case actually this 4 is a descendant of this uh, 2. So that's a given fact but we are remember we are also told that uh, we allow a node to be a descendant of itself as well. So in this case uh, since this 2 and 4 so 4 is already a descendant of this 2 and 2 is already a descendant of its uh, self. So in this case we will have to return this 2 as the answer and uh, that is what is given over here. Uh, we are given one more example where we are given only two nodes uh, for this given binary tree so the binary tree looks like this two and one and in this case we are given the value of this p to be two and q to be one so again we can see that in this case this two is already a descendant of itself and this one is actually a child of two so because of that one is also a descendant of this two so in this case we will again return this two to be answer now i hope that this makes uh, understanding the problem more easier and now let's see that what is the approach we are going to solve this problem Okay, first of all, I'm actually going to show you a bunch of different binary search trees and for all of those binary search trees, I have created some P and Q values and we are going to see that what was the lo uh, lowest common ancestor and why that was the lowest common ancestor, right? Now, we already know that important property of binary search tree and that is that for any given root value, everything on the left subtree of that binary search tree is actually less than that and everything on the right side of that binary search tree is greater than that. We already know this important property and we are going to take it to our advantage based on this given root value or any root value and with subsequent p and q values so if we see over here in this case the, the given value of p is actually 6 and if we start traversing through this binary search tree immediately we would find the 6 to be present over here so because we find the 6 to be present there can only be one possibility that this q or whatever the value of q that would either be on the left side of the subtree or right side of the subtree but we already find the value to be 6 over here so immediately we can return 6 to be the lowest common ancestor because anyways this value of q is uh, somewhere uh, supposed to fall inside the remaining binary search tree and in this case it is on the right side of the subtree so we will return 6 as the answer this makes sense right now the next example uh, again we are given the same thing we are given this value p to be 11 and q to be 9 so we know that this p is over here and q, q is over here 11 is going to be answer but let's uh, let's go ahead with our algorithm so first of all we'll start iterating over this root so the root value is actually 8 now for this root value we are going to compare it the with the values of p and q right in this case the value of p and q both are actually greater than this 8 so because both are the greater than this 8 uh, we know based on the property of binary search tree that they are meant to fall somewhere on the right side of this given binary search tree so we will start iterating over the right side of the binary search tree to either find the values of p or q or if we can't find we will try to find the lowest common ancestor so when we start iterating over on the right side of the subtree we will ignore this left side of the subtree we don't care now this value is 11 this value is 11 is actually matches the value of this given p 
so immediately whether when we whenever we find a match with either p or q we can return that to be the lowest common ancestor immediately and in this case this is going to be the answer because uh, this 9 is meant to be somewhere below this binary search tree and in this case it is immediately right here present so we will return this 11 to be the answer which is the lowest common ancestor let's take one more example which is very similar so in this case this value is p, or p is equal to 3 and q is equal to 1 now again based on our algorithm we will start traversing over this binary search tree now the first value we traverse whenever we compare its value with this p and q immediately we find a match with this uh, p to be over here so because we find a match over here do we really need to iterate over this given binary search tree well the answer is no why because we know that this q value is somewhere going to be down below and that is always going to be this descendant of this p so again we are going to return the values 3 as the lowest common ancestor uh, so far it makes sense that whenever either we identify the value of p and q we can return that to be the lowest common ancestor immediately but what happens if the case is little bit different so in this case i'm give i have given the value of p to be 6 and q to be 9 right again let's start with our algorithm so we'll start iterating over this binary search tree so first of all this value is actually 5 so because this value is 5 we'll try to see that okay we will compare it with this value of p and q right so actually this 5 is less than p and less than q both p and q are greater than this root value so immediately it is meant to fall somewhere on the right side of the subtree so now we'll start iterating on the right side of the subtree we'll ignore these two because we don't need them now again this value is 7 so let's compare this 7 with this value of p and q well if we compare this 7 this 7 is actually greater than this p and this 7 is actually less than this q where well, right so we can conclude this this 7 actually falls somewhere in the middle because uh, on for the 7 on one side 6 is meant to be because 6 is less than 7 and somewhere on the other side 9 is meant to be because 9 is greater than the 7 based on the property of a binary search tree and if we utilize that to our maximum advantage we can immediately determine that the 7 is the common point between this 6 and 9 where on one side 6 resides so 6 resides on the left side over here and 9 resides on the right side of the the subtree so on the right side of the subtree this is where 9 resides so we will return 7 to be the answer in this case and this is the approach we are going to follow so every single time for any given tree we will start iterating over that tree uh, and we are going to compare its value with p and q based on that we will de decide that whether we go on the left side of the subtree or right side of the subtree the moment we find a match between p and q uh, whatever the value we found if we find that we will return that to be the lowest common ancestor if we don't find a match and if we are in a situation where uh, this value of p is on the left side of this any root value and q is on the right side of any root value then immediately we can return that value to be the answer and this is the approach we are going to take to solve this problem and uh, this is the optimal way to solve it now there are two ways to solve this problem we can either solve it recursively or we can solve it iteratively now i like recursion better but iterate it iterative method will also work as expected in this case now for the recursion if we see the time and space complexity the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n because we will have to iterate over all the values in the worst case scenario and for the space complexity the space complexity is actually going to be big o of n as well because we will have to run maintain the runtime stack for this recursion method well uh, one good thing in iterative method is that for iterative method the time complexity is still going to be big o of n but for the space complexity we can actually use a constant space complexity for the iterative approach but in the coding because i am trying to improve my recursion i will be showing you the recursive method but just remember that iterative approach would be the better option in this, this case So we are going to use the same method as our recursive method and first of all in this method as an input we are given this root value we are given the value of p and q so first of all because we are, don't need to deal with this tree node we will actually have to deal with this integer value so we are i am going to initialize three variables uh, called the parent value uh, p value and q value and uh, i am going to assign the values based on this uh, whatever the input we get now we will have to check that whether this parent value uh, if that is the common point between p and q or either p and q falls on one side or other side of this binary tree if that is the case we will call our recursive method again so first of all we are going to check that if this p value and q value both are greater than uh, this parent value if that is the case which means we will have to iterate on the right side of the subtree so we are going to call the iterative method on the right side of the subtree 
if that is not the case we are going to check that whether this p value and q value both falls on the left side of this parent value uh, so again we are going to do that so if both p value and q value are less than the parent value which means we will have to search the left side of the subtree so we are going to do that okay if that is not the case which means that whatever this root info root value we are at that is either p or q value uh, which means we can return root immediately that's it uh, that should be working let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions in terms of time complexity i already mentioned you that the for the space complexity this recursive solution is not the most optimal but i want to practice recursion so that's why i did that you can find an iterative solution that works as well and i would be sub uh, i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you